The theory of evolution highlights an unfriendly process, one that happens through natural forces and only helps creatures with changes that help them have babies. This could make animals look amazing and have impressive abilities, but could also create really tricky parasites. Parasites are all over the place. Almost every species has another species that sticks to them or lives inside them, taking their food. Sometimes a parasite just has to bite you, but some parasites have very complicated life cycles and need several hosts to finish. Before we get started, be sure to smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell for more such amazing content. Mind Control Right now, one of the most famous parasites is a fungus called Cordyceps. It usually targets jungle ants and other insects. You might have seen it in a show called The Rest of Us, where it was shown as infecting humans and making them act like scary zombies. This demonstrates how parasites can take over a creature's mind, and the way they do it is both clever and frightening. Ants usually stay close to the ground in the jungle because that's where they find most of their food. However, this fungus needs to be higher up to catch another ant and grow. So it does something very sneaky. It sends small parts into the ant's brain and releases special chemicals. These chemicals make the ants climb up plants. Once they're high enough, but not too high, the fungus makes the ants bite down on the vein under a plant leaf. This is called the death bite, because even when the ant dies, it stays stuck in that spot. In this position, the fungus can thrive. After eating everything inside the ant, it bursts out of the ant's body and grows a tall spike. This spike releases tiny particles called spores. From their high perch, these spores fall down on other ants below, starting a new cycle of infection and control. This tricky way of controlling hosts is believed by some to have been happening for at least 48 million years. This is because they found fossilized ants stuck in the death bite position. Make hosts sociable when we see flamingos, we notice how bright pink they are, but many don't know why they have this shocking color. Some might say it's because they eat pink shrimp, but that's only part of the story. It actually has to do with parasites. You might have had sea monkeys as pets when you were a kid, but these sea monkeys aren't the fun, playful creatures on the packaging. They're actually tiny shrimp. These shrimp make up a big part of what flamingos eat and give them their pink color. Now here's the interesting part. Sea monkeys turn very pink because they're infected with a tapeworm called Flamingolepsis linguloides. These worms grow into adults inside flamingos, but to get there, they need to be eaten by the birds. So they make their sea monkey hosts as attractive as possible. They make the sea monkeys turn red so that they're easy for flamingos to spot. They also make the shrimp more social, causing them to gather in big groups. It's like a fun party for the shrimp until they become flamingo food pretend to be their children. When you see a pretty butterfly flying around, you probably don't think about parasites. But there's a butterfly called the large blue butterfly, which starts its life by fooling ants into taking care of it. This butterfly, called Fengaris arian, has babies that look like ant larvae. But that's not all. The butterfly babies also smell like ant babies. When they hatch, these butterfly larvae drop to the ground near an ant nest and wait for an unsuspecting ant to pass by. The ant, thinking it's found a lost ant baby, carries the butterfly larva inside. The ants then feed and look after the butterfly larva until it's ready to come out. Many butterflies in this family do similar tricky things, and each butterfly has a favorite type of ant to be raised by. They're believed to choose ants based on the specific smells they use to fool them. Make them look like fruit. When parasites have a life cycle that involves several hosts, it can be tricky for them to move from one host to another. Many parasites have a clever method. They make their first host look more appealing to their next host, hoping it gets eaten, which takes them to their next home. Take the South American ant Cephalotes atratus, for example. It's not interesting on its own, just a plain black color, and it can glide when it falls thanks to its legs. Its thick black shell makes it not very tasty to birds. But everything changes when it gets infected by the nematode parasite Myrmiconema neotropicum. When the parasite infects the ant, it makes the ant's hard outer shell thinner. This makes the ant easier to eat, but it also changes its color. The parasite pushes red pigments to the surface, making the ant's belly look like a red berry. Birds see these berries and swoop down to eat them, which allows the parasite to move on to its next host. 
attracting predators. Snails don't live very fancy lives. They move slowly on the ground and can get infected by various parasites. One of these parasites is the strange-sounding Leucochloridium paradoxum, and it makes snails get eaten in a rather unusual way. This parasitic fluke enters the snail and starts to spread throughout its body, slowly consuming about 20% of the snail. Afterward, it creates these special sacs that push into the snail's eye stalks and begin to move and pulse. These strange green-banded things catch the attention of birds flying by, looking for an easy meal. To make sure the snail gets eaten, the parasite even changes the way the snail behaves so it stays in well-lit areas. Once the snail gets eaten by a bird, the parasite moves into the bird's stomach and starts laying eggs. These eggs come out naturally when the bird poops and they wait on the ground until a snail crawls over them. Pretend to be a mate Nature can be tough on just one gender of a species sometimes. Take the male anglerfish, for example. It's like a parasite on the female anglerfish. The male is thousands of times smaller than the female. It attaches itself to the female skin and dissolves most of its body, leaving only its testicles so it can pass on sperm to the female. Now, in the insect world, there's a parasitic beetle that goes after only males. The larvae of this blister beetle, called Meloe francisanis, has a clever trick to sneak into a beehive. When they hatch, they climb up a plant and huddle together in a group. Then they release a strong hormone that lures male digger bees. These male digger bees think there's a female bee waiting to mate, but it's actually the beetle larvae in a wriggling ball. When the male bee tries to mate with this ball of parasites, they climb onto the bee. Later, when the male bee finds a real female to mate with, the larvae move over to her and get carried to the hive. Once inside the hive, the beetle larvae are fed as if they were the bee's own young, but they also eat the bee's larvae. Make you gay Periodical cicadas have a really unique life cycle. They come out of the ground in massive groups every 13 or 17 years to have babies. Even though they spend more than 99% of their lives underground growing, they only have a few weeks in the open before they die. That's what makes the parasitic fungus Massaspora cicadina even more mean. This fungus's tiny parts land in the soil and infect the cicadas when they come out of the ground for their short time in the sunlight. Once they're infected, the fungus completely takes over their bellies. This makes it look like the cicada's backside is falling apart, leaving a big white lump. This big fungus thing spreads tiny parts on the ground below and on any other cicadas that come close. People call the infected cicadas flying salt shakers of death. When the male cicadas get infected, they start to move their wings like the females usually do. This attracts other males who try to mate with them. Usually, if one male tries to do that, the other would shake him off, but when they're infected, they let it happen. This helps the fungus spread even faster. Turn fear into desire About half the people on Earth are unknowingly infected with a parasite called Toxoplasma gondii. This parasite wants to end up inside a cat's body so it can make more of itself. While most parasites are picky about the animals they live in, Toxoplasma is quite flexible. It can live in most warm-blooded animals. But to get back into a cat, it has some clever tricks. Toxoplasma leaves tiny bits in cat poop. When rodents scurry around on the ground, they often eat these bits by mistake. This is a good start because rodents are one of the main meals for cats. But the parasite can also change how the rodents act to make it more likely that cats will eat them. Infected mice become less anxious and more curious, which makes them easier targets for cats. With rats, the parasite is even more direct. Normally, rats avoid the smell of cat urine, but when they're infected, they become strangely attracted to it. They get closer to where cats live, increasing the chances of becoming a meal for a cat. This helps the Toxoplasma parasite get back to its favorite host. Toxoplasma might even play a role in some human behavior problems. Some studies suggest that being infected might be connected to a higher risk of suicide, developing schizophrenia, and slower reaction times. Replace organs Most parasites prefer to stay hidden so the host doesn't notice them and get rid of them. But Cymothoa exigua is quite obvious about how it steals from its host. This louse's baby enters a fish through the gills and goes to the fish's mouth. It bites down on the fish's tongue and stops the blood from flowing there. Without blood, the tongue starts to rot and eventually falls off. This isn't good for the fish, but the louse has a solution. 
it climbs onto the remaining piece of the tongue and acts just like a real tongue. Now safely inside the fish's mouth, the louse eats some of the fish's food and even snacks on the mucus the fish makes. Once it's well fed, the louse can mate with the males living in the fish's gill pouch and lay its eggs. Lampsilis mussels People usually think of mussels as harmless creatures that live in water bodies. The worst thing they can do is give you a stomach ache if you eat one. But if you're a fish, they might use a clever trick to make you carry their babies. Lampsilis mussels live in fresh water, and the female mussels have come up with a few tricks to attract fish. They have special sacs to hold their babies, and these sacs look and act just like the prey fish usually eat. Each mussel species mimics a different animal. Most of the time, these sacs look like tiny fish. The imitation is so detailed that it fools the fish. Many of these sacs even have fake eyes and tails. When the fish gets too close to the mussel's trick, it strikes and shoots its baby mussels into the fish's face. Now the fish has baby mussels stuck in its gills, and the baby mussels attach there to feed on the fish's blood. After a few weeks of being parasites, the baby mussels are grown enough to leave and start their new life as sedentary bottom feeders. In the world of parasites, deception and manipulation are the name of the game. These frightening tricks reveal the astonishing ways in which nature's tiny terrors exploit and control their unsuspecting hosts, showcasing the relentless and often eerie strategies employed by these masters of survival. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please let us know by clicking the like button, do share, write a comment, and don't forget to subscribe so you can catch up on our next video.